Welcome back to my channel. I'm continuing the series that started on and that is the origin of narcissism. My channel is dedicated towards creating narcissistic abuse awareness and most of from a biblical standpoint. And I'll also be discussing other general life issues. When we now go to the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 to 17 we read How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I'll ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the uttermost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds, and I will make myself like the most high. But you are, but you are brought down to the grave, O depths of the pit. Those who see you stare at you. They ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble? The man who made the world a desert? Who threw its cities and who would not let his captives go home? It brings more what became of the cherub who wanted the glory of God. We are now beginning to see the selfish nature. He said in his heart, it is about the issue of the heart. Don't be fooled by these philanthropists out there. Don't be fooled by these altruists out there. Just because someone uh, carries out an act of kindness does not make them good. The Bible says, if you who are evil give good gifts to your children, how much more basically will the father do? Giving a good gift does not make you good, people. It is about your heart. We have so many wolves in sheep's clothing on the pulpit purporting themselves to be pastors. They lie. They lie incessantly. And the worst part is I'll say the sheeplings and the goats in the church who are, who are, they are uploading them. You know, narcissism does not, does not thrive in a vacuum. It needs the nebulas. It needs the flying monkeys. And we have flying monkeys in church. So, so they are so numerous. Those who will always side with the evil. We are living in the last days. The word says that a, a time will come when evil will be called good and good evil. We are living in those times. When you call out the pastor, you, they rush to touch not the anointed. How, how is a, a wolf in sheep's cloth, clothing anointed? We have misinterpreted the word of God to the point that we've lost touch with the word. Church cannot recognize a manipulative person from, from a good person. The Bible still tells us in the last days, the lies will be so enormous that we won't, we won't be able to differentiate them. And I believe this is it. Narcissism is. We are too quick to run over the victims while we are covering the abusers. In the name of pray for them. You know, God, God deals with us differently. Take your time. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He said in his heart, I will ascend. Church needs to get back to the word of God. Stop shielding abusers. You're, you're shielding wolves in sheep's clothing. God tells us to expose them. Church is telling us, shush up about them. What happens when wolves in sheep's clothing are left among the sheep? The sheep gets devoured. God willed it. So if God willed it, why were you praying against it in the first place? Why did he tell you to pray? Touch not the anointed. A person who lives the word of God, a person who walks in the word of God is the anointed person. Not the one who has been given a podium. You could be having 100,000, 50,000 congregants at your church. It doesn't make you anointed. You're just a great orator, full of worldly wisdom. When he said, I'll rise above the, the stars of God and dethrone God, was talking about how he was going to dethrone God. He's going to be God-like. Remember in his heart he's saying all this. If you rise above God, you make yourself God. You become self. It is about you. Me, myself, and I. He went against the greatest commandments God had put in place. I'll read from Matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. 
And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love your soul. 40. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I did not come to take away the law or the, the prophets. Rather, he came to fulfill it. In your heart is where you make the decision. You are going to lie to the rest of the world. You lie to those around you. But it's your heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaking also is not just a verbal. It is your actions. Words that don't align with your actions, that is manipulation. And at the heart of manipulation is deception. And we know the father of all liars is the devil. That's why these pastors who go on, these preachers, bishops, you name it, reverends, I'll call them all the elders of the church. Those with those titles. They are beating up their wives, sodomizing them, they are lying, they are having numerous relationships. Some pastors, they don't need people to come into their church to become a congregation, no. Just look at the choir members, almost all the children the choir members are having have been fathered by the pastor. For him, he's growing and multiplying from within, not from without. The women there are his concubines. They have children. Then you also hear they are sleeping with their grandchildren. They are now children or grandchildren, whatever the case may be now. You don't know what to call it, other than it's incestuous. This also goes further to explain when Timothy tells us that in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. The spirit of narcissism has risen in these last days. God is not God. We've become God of our own selves. And this is why we are seeing the selfishness coming in. And the worst part about all this, church is encouraging. We, we are uploading them. These people thrive off the, the supply from the outside. They want bigger churches. bigger. Not because of that their congregants are, need it, no. They are competing with other churches who have put up structures. They are rushing to open up different uh, supposed social amenities just to compete, just to have their name out there. People, all that is vanity. Even those who keep saying it's the spirit of God. It's, no, there's a way they put it. When you listen to them speak, you know this is self. The self in them is speaking. It's not the spirit of God. And even if you're delivering something that the Spirit of God told you to, and by the time you are delivering it, it is all about you. Whatever could have started by God, you are finishing it. That is troublesome. The person who dethrones God is always self-centered, and that's why the people who are self-centered have a Mormon spirit in them. Money is at the helm of who they are, because money moves. Money moves it moves for them. Money is equated to power. You pay off someone to do whatever you want. You're finding corruption is at it's at its thickest. This is all the spirit of self. We are in the last days. The devil is not sleeping. Where God is absent, the God of this world is present. The 13. He talks of how he's going to rise above the throne. I'll sit enthroned on, on the uttermost heights of the sacred mountain. I'll ascend above the tops of the clouds. He's talking about his above creation. Christ is the origin of creation. Look up my video of marriage as it was in the beginning. There's a wealth of information regarding this there. It ties, it ties. Bereshit, the son of God in the beginning. He's the Christ, the one who was crucified on the cross, who became the covenant for us. Before the foundations of the earth, I was crucified. Bereshit. Christ is the firstborn among the dead. He's the Rosh. He's the beginning. He's the, he's the head. It's by him. It is through him. It is in him that we are. Nothing short of it. Anything contradicting the person, the Christ, you know you're dealing with a false spirit. He said in his heart, because he had been given all these nice things, in his heart he wanted what the maker had given him. He wanted to become like him. And I've seen this amongst some families. Some relatives are brought in into a business and literally they plan the murder of the person who picked them from the gutters.
who eventually took them through school, helped them grow in a business, gave them even uh, some money to start off a business, to kickstart it. And guess what? They turn around and stab. The very people whom you share the pot of stew with are the very people who are your enemies, are the very people who are stabbing you. As they hug you, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was perfect. The angels were, they rejoiced at the creation of God. Everything was good. Now we get to the understanding of how the devil chose in his heart to become. While he was a cherub, he wanted to dethrone God and become God. And in so doing, God could not even house him. The team led by Angel Michael, who fought, and a third of the stars, these were the angelic beings also, were cast out of heaven with the fallen angel. After being cast out, he ends up on the earth. This explains the formlessness and emptiness and uh, the darkness on the earth. Genesis 1 to now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God, Ruach Elohim, was hovering over the waters. The Hebrew word for formless is tohu, and the Hebrew word for empty is bohu. Tohu has got the Hebrew letters tav, hey, and wow, or vav, meaning meaningless, formless, futile, waste, waste, waste space, empty space, nothing, confusion, and chaos. I look at this as a baseline of the loss of identity. Confu where confusion and chaos is, there's loss of identity. To the current environment is pushing for the transgenderism. They started with the gay agenda. Uh, that caught fire. It, it, it became acceptable in many societies. Then they started, they started going for the transgenderism. Right now they are pushing for pedophilia and they are doing it through drug queens. Why are adults, and I've seen this with the male, drug queens, why are they pushing the agenda of encouraging their dysfun mental dysfunctionality? Among children, we are looking at four-year-olds, five-year-olds being taught transgenderism, masturbation, teaching children to mutilate their bodies as they are having this entire confusion. What is it? Formlessness. And by the under World Health Organization, World Health Organization is in it to who lack of identity because the devil will always come for your identity. Once he has made you question your identity, he's good to go. He has created a highway to his agenda. Where confusion is, the devil is present. Because God is not a God of confusion. Isaiah chapter 59, 2. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. A person who doesn't know who they are, can be swept by anything. They'll repeat the mistakes over and over. Why? Because they don't learn from history. And history keeps repeating itself. That is the strange thing about life. Bohu. Bohu has got bet, hey, vav. Bohu has got bet, the meaning of void, empty. Where you find tohu, you'll always find bohu. The absence of God creates confusion and chaos and uh, an emptiness within you. That's why 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Because where love is present, fear is absent. We are now looking at the attachment theory here. At that point when the cherub in his heart said he, he was going for God's glory, God ceased to be in him. He became... For you to become, it means there is a choice. This, the, cherub, the cherub here chose to become. 
he wasn't, he just chose in his heart. It comes down to the heart. You may give the most eloquent speech as long as your heart is not in place. God tells us that they serve me with their lips, but their hearts are cold. They are, they are of flesh. They are not of my spirit. In other words, they are lying spirits. They are deceitful spirits. Where chaos and confusion are present, there is a void and emptiness and darkness which stems from fear. And perfect love casts out all fear. That's why you can that's why you cannot serve two masters at a go. Our body system is either in the there's rest and digestion of the response system, fight, flight, freeze or fawn. The body cannot be in two two places at the same time in this in this regard. I'll continue this teaching in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Blessings.